Today is uh, a January day and it's a bit dim and um, dingy so I thought perhaps we could cheer things up by painting some lovely little snowdrops which are always the first flowers to appear in the, well still in the winter really, I should think in England they'll be coming out. Um, we don't really see them much here in France but uh, we have to make up for that by painting them. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board Click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. So here we go. I've got a couple of examples here um, that I've done in preparation for today's video. This is a, a quick um, pen and ink, not particularly good, but just to get me warmed up. I was uh, I put them in a vase. I don't think you can really, but anyway, you know, make it up as you go along. Do whatever. Um, I just drew it in pen and then coloured it in a little bit with some some watercolour. Uh, so that's that one. And this one I did last night, uh, just before I went to bed, um, to get some idea of blending colours in the background. So what I'm going to do today with you is something similar to this. We're going to do a little greetings card and a couple of bookmarks, um, hopefully. And um, I'm going to paint them more or less in this style. But there you are, you've got that too. So if you want to try and copy something along those lines, just do yourself a screenshot and uh, it's your uncle. That Bob again, he's back. Um, right, so this is from, this is a page from my 365 Days of Art book by Lorna Scott, Lorna Scobie. Um, I just used a page there. She says, draw an icy landscape. So of course I did a snowdrop, what else? So <laughs> I'll put that over here for a minute. Now, um, <clears throat> I just want to show you quickly how to how to draw this um, flower. They're quite simple really if you simplify them. If you spend a lot of time trying to do it in great detail then um, I think it's harder but basically um, they have usually visible three petals. They've probably got more but to get the snowdrop look you need three petals and the other thing that <clears throat> gives the snowdrop look is its kind of capsule at the top that holds the petals. So you draw a little hat like that and then you're just going to put in one, two, three petals. And you can give, you know, you can give your flowers character um, according to how you feel. You don't have to do them exactly the way nature designed them. Nature's flexible. So, you know, something along those lines. Then the stem comes out of the top here. Don't make some great big loop like a like a shepherd's crook. Just just draw a gentle little curve at the top and then the stem coming down like this. Because when you paint a flower, you want to look for the essence that makes it that particular flower and try and get that right. I don't always get it right. Sometimes I go off beam, but... Um, so then the stem is slender and slightly curved, but basically straight. And then the <clears throat> leaves come more or less out from the bottom. They have a kind of... Um, uh, 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 um, a, a whirl, I think we used to call it in biology, of leaves at the bottom. And they're s s uh, slightly pointed, but they don't go to a point. They have a, a blunt end and they're, they're curved a bit like that. And they, they sort of come out like this. And you can just adjust them to sit how you want. If you want to have one coming down like that to give your or whatever. You can do them the other way if you want, but basically they come over and down. And you could have one coming up here if you want. And then you could put a second flower, which is what I've done for my design, a second flower in up here. And don't, don't faff too much about the flowers because you're going to paint around that anyway, so it doesn't have to be too accurate. So, so there we are. Something along those lines is what we're aiming for. Hope that helps a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to put that aside. And this is my card that I'm going to paint on now, which is an etcher 
card. I will show you what they look like out of the box. These ones here, they're quite nice because they, they look very professional when you've painted them because they have this stamp on the back and everything. Uh, it's nice paper, good quality. Unfortunately, they're fairly expensive, but if you don't want to lash out on those, um, then um, Strathmore cards or one of those other ones are fine. So there's my picture I've drawn and I've put some masking tape around it. I've got some of this very narrow masking tape, which is what you need for um, a small one like this. Otherwise, well, it, well, you can do it with a wider one, but the narrow one is nice. So there's that. So I'm going to do background and then I'll do the flowers. Um, let's see. I've got my Kuretake paints here and uh, we're going to do the background using those. Well, we can do all of it using those. Uh, go out and put that out of the way. Um, probably going to use um, lilac and blue. And I need a, uh, um, I need a palette to mix them in. So I was going to wash this, but I forgot. We've had a bit of a crisis here one way and another with various different electrical things. Nearly set the house on fire yesterday. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating. I said to my husband, well, at least it didn't catch fire. And he said, well, actually it did. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I wasn't in the room. <laughs> so let's begin. Take some, uh, take a brush, take some uh, clean water. I was going to say white water, but that, that's something else, isn't it? And we'll just wet around the flowers. I've drawn this in an ordinary pencil, just a, one of these. Stettler school pencil says on it. Doesn't matter what you use, as long as it's not a watercolour pencil. If you use a watercolour pencil, you'll get a completely different effect because it will run, which you may or may not want. Doesn't matter if you paint over the stems. Doesn't matter if you paint over the leaves, but I'll try and keep off of them as much as I can. So that's that. I think that's, uh, if you look at it from the side, you should be able to see if you've missed any bits. So basically the idea is to paint um, the background so that when you drop the paint in, it will spread. So let's start with some mauve up here and just don't do this, you know, I'm cleaning the car kind of mov um, movement. Just, that's why you need a palette so that you can dilute it a little bit. Just drop it in and let it do its thing like that. There we go. We were talking this morning about how painting is such a good way of taking your mind off all the trials and tribulations that we're all facing at the moment. You know, things like setting your house on fire and uh, finding the fridges leaking all over the floor in the studio and uh, having your heating system break down and uh, what else? <laughs> yeah, so you have to get away from that sometimes, don't you? So I'm just dropping these colours in more or less at random and uh, I make it go slightly lighter on the right hand side than it is on the left. Just for, you know, variety's sake. And uh, once you've done this, you can alter it a bit. You can drop in water, which will give you some more movement. And you could do several things. You can spatter it, or you could um, you could put some salt on it to give you a, a bit more of a texture. Should I do that? Uh, where's the salt? Um, yeah, fine salt, coarse salt, you've got the option. And if you just... Uh, 
sprinkle a little bit of that on, especially if you do it once it's just started to dry. Don't go bonkers with it. So you just do that and you'll get a sort of speckly effect, which, which you may or may not like. So you either do or don't do it. So compulsion here. Um, I'll just tidy that up a bit so that comes up a little bit closer there. And now we have to wait for it to dry. So I'll put that aside. And quite often, you know, whoops, but quite often you find the first one you do, either it's the best one you ever did or it's the worst. So this might very well turn out to be the worst. But we'll see. So now um, let's do the um, these, which are bookmarks, sorry, brain, brain seizure. <laughs> I've done the same thing here, just masked out the area and, and we're going to come in then with some blue for the background. This one I'm not going to wet, I'm just going to paint straight in. And I'm going to do it also in a mixture of I'm trying not to put my arm in my paint. A mixture of lilac and blue, the background at the top here. I've painted over the stems on purpose because we're going to put those in at the end afterwards. So, And the idea is this is snowy down here and uh, sky and stuff behind. Make that a little bit darker. I think I might bring that down a little bit. Okay, okay, and then this one. Maybe we will um, move to something a little bit more greenish on this one. These um paints are very strong. You can see how very, very powerful they are. Yeah, let's let's have a nice kind of grey green colour in the background there. I think somebody asked me the question the other day, do you plan your paintings? Do you plan the faces? She was talking about the faces on the animals, like the birds and so on, or does it just happen? And I said it's sort of 50-50. And it is in the sense that um, you, you like to think you know where you're going, but often you end up going somewhere else. A bit like when you go shopping, really. I'm going to go to golf or, oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm somewhere else. Okay, so so yes, so I think this is a good example of that because I'm painting away here and I have no idea where I'm going. Let's see what happens. If you never see this video, that's why.
There's no point in stressing about it, is it? It's all about painting together. Reminds me of when when I lived in Bermuda and I was in the American women, Women's uh, Club, or whatever they called it, I can't remember what its name was, AW American... Anyway, a, a social club there with lots of American ladies and some English people and locals and everything. And we used to just get together over a cup of coffee once a week and sit and paint. Or well, sometimes we didn't paint very much, but you never knew what was going to turn out. That was nice. Right. Okay, so that's the two, three backgrounds all done. I'm going to have to get the hairdryer out and uh, whack that on. So the hairdryer has done its job and uh, everything's nice and dry now. So I just need to rub off the salt and um, you could use your fingers or you can use an eraser. I think I'm, I'm using here um, a shaving brush, you know, as you do. Thank you, Sylvia. <laughs> So we'll just do that and uh, just check that it's all gone. And you can see that there's quite a nice pattern of blotchiness there, which is uh, it's quite nice, isn't it? And um, it definitely gives you a lot more variety in the background without too much effort. Um, so then the next thing to do is to decide what to do next. I'm going to find a smaller brush, a little bit smaller. Um, this this is a five I think yes that's a five so we'll do that um, we'll use that and so we need some green and we need really sort of green that's I don't know something that goes with this color I was thinking of getting a color wheel um, you know one of those cardboard ones that people have I think that might be a good idea to have that handy for deciding on colours and things. So if I was to paint a little bit of green onto here, is that going to work? You say to yourself, I don't know, maybe a more yellowish, let's try. And, oh no, don't definitely not. So it's got to be a bluish green. Uh, What's this one? Oh, that's a very dark one, isn't it? Under. No, I don't think so. It's got to be a, a what you could call a broken green, which means a green that's been greyed down a little bit, I think. I think I'll start off with this one here, which is this plus that. So I've put a bit of brown, basically, into my um, palette. A little bit of brown, so we'll... Start off with the top and uh, we we'll just put some of that in, and then we're going to want to go darker. Just drop some darker colour in like that. Put some green and some mauve in for the leaves.
Okay, so we'll let that dry. And then for the um, actual flowers, I've, I've gone over the edge a little bit there. So I'm just going to take my brush and soften that. So that becomes then just a little shadow, which is what you want on that back petal there. And then we'll pick up some very, very, very light blue. Um, ultramarine blue will do very lightly. I'm just painting the shadows on the tops of the petals there and, and then soften the edge a bit so that the shadow is soft at one side and harder on the other side. And we can later on, we can sharpen up the points if you want to be a bit more precise. This is the same, I've gone over the edge. And so I'm going to have to try and lift that. If you've got good, you can, it's always the test of good quality paper, if you can lift your color. If you can't lift the paint off, the paper's rubbish. And uh, this is very often the case. But this is, this etcher uh, card paper, it's very good. Can't argue with that. So we'll just go in the back petal there, soften that a little bit. Go in the back petal there. And then maybe just a little bit here. Okay, so then we'll just add a line or two in the center of these leaves. I think now I'm feeling a little less timid. I'm going to come in with some darker some darker greeny purple for the stems again. So we will um, let that dry, but meanwhile we'll just remove the tape and we'll let that dry and come back to that and see if it needs anything else done to it. And meanwhile, quickly, a little bit of a time constraint here because I have to have an early lunch today and get to the hospital with my dear other half for a check up on his head. Um, okay, so we'll do the similar kind of thing here, I think. And the colour I ended up with, purple and green. I'm going to start with the leaves. stems. So this one is a little bit, well, it's not really different. It's the same, really, but I feel a little bit more. Um, this is the thing, you know, you start something and you think, ah, what am I going to do? 
you just just keep going. Because, as I was sort of mumbling about a few minutes ago, we need something, don't we, to take our minds off things, whatever the things are that are troubling us. Painting will definitely take your mind off it. <laughs> For a while, anyway. Come back up here. When you look at photos of these flowers, the leaves often seem to be quite bluish green, I think. If you don't like what you've done, just lift some of it out, dry your paintbrush off on a tissue or a piece of cloth and just lift out the colour a little bit and then leave it alone, let it spread. Okay, so now we need some very pale blue again. I think this is cobalt. I quite like cobalt. Blue is a shadow colour and you dilute that down a lot. And then we'll just come in, pick which petals are going to be behind, shadow them a bit. And soften the edge by just doing the same thing with your brush, making your brush into a thirsty brush and softening that edge. A little bit down the middle. Usually you need at least two layers of shadow on these kinds of things that are so delicate. And uh, you're going to think to yourself, okay, I need to let that dry and um, soften up some of these edges so it's a little bit more delicate. Okay, so like I said, this, this paper is quite nice. It behaves, you can lift. And uh, lift anyway, see? Just by using a thirsty brush. A bit more texture if you want it. If you don't want it, smooth it out. This is one that you could uh, pen and ink. You might want to um, do something like that on that one. Now this one Moving on swiftly, um, I'm going to actually increase the amount of blue in the background here a little bit. I think I might drop in a little bit of violet around the flowers. And then I'm going to cover up the other one, this one here, I'll cover that one up and we'll get some, let's get some silver white kind of thing and just see whether, stand up for this, I can put some spatter, come on brush, you can spatter, I don't 
really need to go and get my toothbrush for this, do I? Seriously? That'll do. So that'll give us a little bit of interest. I'm just going to do some bigger ones here with the brush. Alternative to um, salt, although I think the salt worked quite well. Um, Okie dokie, so now we need to do the leaves. And again, like I said, what colour green are we going to use on this one? Maybe we'll have a little bit more of a a little bit more sparky, something like that, perhaps. I didn't draw enough leaves in in the beginning, so I'm just adding some now. And we'll want reasonably dark colour for the... Ah, of course, hang on a second. It's not dry. Okay, so it's dry now. <laughs> Gabriel's got, uh, he's in good voice today. Sometimes he starts crowing in the middle of the night. You wonder why. Let me out. Silly thing. The best way of making a green darker is to add purple. You can get some amazing greens, dark greens. If you add any purple color, any, any dark red, And then we need our light blue again. Um, not that one. The only snag with this set of colours is I keep forgetting which one's which. I should write their names on them, shouldn't I? Okay, so we'll just soften those shadows a little bit. And we put a little bit, it was that one, All right. A little bit more snow sh shadow here. And there we are, now we just let that dry and uh, then we'll take the tape off. Okay, so it's all dry. I'm going to take off the tape now and uh, then we'll cut these into um, the appropriate sized strips. I think bookmarks are such a good idea. I know 
not everybody reads books now and I I um I have started also to read from Kindle but I'm very wary about it because the other day I think I gave myself a migraine by too much exposure to emitted light and so I think it's a good idea to concentrate on reading books rather than reading from a screen because we use too many screens too much of the time in my honest opinion so yeah so when people give you a book isn't it nice if they give you a bookmark with it I think that's such a nice idea somebody mentioned that they do that the other day and I thought how sweet is that especially and she said why don't you paint a bookmark video for every season of the year and you know what I think I'm going to do that because we've started here with January with the with the uh, snowdrops couldn't be much more appropriate and so I think I'm going to do this make this a regular thing so we're going to cut down here and there we are we have our two bookmarks and our card so I hope you enjoyed that don't forget to subscribe and uh, like and do all the things that uh, good viewers do and don't forget to go and check out our Patreon we've got a new feature now on Patreon we're going to be uploading all our entire catalogue of videos with no ads on them at all so that members of the top two tiers will be able to watch 500 videos before very long they'll be all up there on Patreon for you to watch so go and check that out and sign up you get 10% off your membership if you pay for a whole year in advance and it's not a really very big investment it's much less than a week's electricity these days so uh, I'll see you over on Patreon have fun and uh, happy painting everybody see you soon Bye for now. Bye-bye.